Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of The Migration, the podcast, where we talk about visas, student visas and international students and what it's like to immigrate to Australia. Um, today we want to discuss the New South Wales policies that's just come out uh, for the 491 and 190 visas. Um, we already filmed a podcast answering these commonly asked questions, but we wanted to continue this series and shed light on even more questions that uh, I feel like um, a lot of clients are wondering about all the time. Um, and we're going to go through them very thoroughly so you get the best educational experience from us. Um, my name is Nikki, I'm a student counsellor at The Migration and today I'm joined by our CEO. Your name is? Nasir Nawaz. <laughs> um, he's all over the channel, such a familiar face. But I think this is um, a bit different as well. Um, we want to thank you for your comments and your feedback and just the support we've been receiving so far for the last episode. Um, but yeah, without further ado, we're going to continue the series. Anything to add? Well, let's start. Yeah. <laughs> That's all there really is to it. Um, okay, so I have a question. This is genuinely just a continuation of what we talked about. Um, and the next question I want to ask you is, how do I know if my occupation is eligible for the New South Wales nomination? All right. So it's very simple. Uh, if you want to check your uh, occupation in the list, simply go to Australian Bureau of Statistics to that website. Just enter your NSCO code, uh, your occupation NSCO code, and you can find your first group number, first four digit of your group, you can tally those four digits in the published New South Wales list for 491 and 190. If it's coming down to the, that list of the 190, it means you are eligible for 190. But if it's coming on subclass 491, it means you are eligible for 491 as well, if it's coming in both and both. But another interesting thing is if, and, and you are eligible for pathway two in 491. Now, in pathway one or pathway three, there are different eligibility criteria. For pathway one, you don't have to follow that list. So we will talk about that one later. Okay, I understand. Um, then the next question is, will New South Wales invite EOIs in occupations outside of the New South Wales skills list? So. If I go on that list and my occupation isn't on it, is that an issue? Well, uh, the answer is yes and no, because if you are expecting an invitation in subclass 190 and your occupation is not in the published list, you should not expect the invitation. But if it's not in the 491, but if you are expecting that invitation in subclass uh, 491 pathway 2, and it's not in the list, your occupation, you should not expect it. But another important thing is, if your occupation is not in the list of 491, the published list, but you are satisfying other eligibility criteria for 491 pathway one, you should expect it anyway. Okay, okay, I understand. Okay, so the next question we'll ask you is that, let's say you do get a nomination and you've been waiting all this time, um, I want to talk about the mode of delivery. So what if um, I, I was, let's say, invited to apply for the New South Wales nomination, but I didn't see the invitation in my email? Like, are they going to resend it? Is there a way for me to go to the office and like ask them, like, how do I gain an update on this? Okay, that's a great question, actually. Let's say uh, you've been selected and the government, New South Wales government, they have nominated you and they sent you the pre-invitation for subclass 190 or 491. But you have not seen that email. It was in your inbox, been sitting there for a while, and it, the link gets expired in 14 days. This is the instance where your email comes in your inbox and you haven't seen that. But let's say that email hit your junk box or spam box and you have not seen it there still the link gets expired in 14 days, you cannot request them to resend it to you. You must, you must wait for the next invitation round. It comes and it doesn't come. I mean, yeah, it is what it is. I mean, if you miss it, you miss it. 
I mean, it's just like, I think it's just like a train. If you miss it, you have to wait for the next one. You cannot say, oh, I saw it going. The doors were closing that uh, time. I couldn't uh, board the train, but uh, I saw it going there. It was uh, there all the time. You have to get into that. So the thing is, if the link gets expired, it expires. That's it. You have to wait for the next one. And this is, so what you do, keep an eye on your inbox and in your junk and spam. If you don't check that on a regular basis, please do so if you have already applied for new South Wales. Right. So it actually all rests upon this one email. Yeah. Yeah, that's correct. Yeah. Wow. That's like a big, that's a big email to look out for. I mean, people might be getting hundreds of emails a day or something. Yeah, but not from NSW. So, I mean, this is a golden opportunity when you see that. So I, I will say if you have submitted EOI for NSW subclass 491 or 190, you must keep an eye. Okay, that's quite harsh. It is. I mean, it's logical. Look, uh, they, 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 they are actually running their own cycle, the government. Now, they, uh, there are limited resources. They are working on the case. If you miss it, you miss it. And if it's carry forward and they, maybe it's a case load or file management or something like that, from their perspective, uh, I think it's uh, quite reasonable and logical. From applicant's perspective, it's maybe not that logical because they say, oh, I have missed it. Or they say, okay, you miss it, you miss it. Now, moving forward, they'll keep an eye anyway. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, that makes sense. Like the responsibility Correct. ultimately rests on you. Um, and I like the train analogy, actually. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay. Um, the next question that's commonly asked is that if, let's say, I was invited to apply for the nomination for a skilled work visa, um, the 491, can it be changed to the 190? Like, is there a way for me to change it? Not at all. Yeah, because, look, 491 is a provisional visa, and it's uh, granted for five years of time. And in during those five years, a uh, visa holder must live in regional area for minimum three years in order to become eligible for subclass 191. That is your permanent residency. Second, subclass 190 is highly competitive as well. And once this one is granted, the visa holder become permanent resident. So there are different requirements for both of them. So you cannot swap it or you cannot change it. You get what you order for. It's not just, you know, it's not like you go to the restaurant, you say, oh, bring me anything. Uh, I, it's not, I mean, yeah, another analogy. Look, uh, and, and, and you have ordered something, some dish, but maybe you like, and that been served. And they say it's a one-off. And now they have limited number of those. And you say, oh, thank you, it's great. You have cooked it, just, you know, I'll keep it warm. And can you please uh, make another one for me or transfer this one? A magic can do that, <laughs> but, but normally it won't. So you cannot transfer your one invitation of subclass to another one. So it's not like, again, you, you catch a train or you catch a plane for any country and say, oh, can I go to another country? So again, you get what you order for. You cannot transfer it anyway. I think I saw, like, I heard like three analogies so far from you. No, I like, I look, that makes a lot of sense. I think, um, why, do, why do people change then? I mean, like if they already applied for an application and have the experience and expectations set up already, what would the reason for that? A reason is like uh, what happens up uh, a New South Wales allows to submit expression of interest, but for both subclasses at the same time. So one has come. Now, the other way around, if you see from the government perspective, once they have invited the applicant, their allocated quota is of the limited numbers, right? Now, that number has been counted towards the quota, and that one number is deducted from that uh, allocated quota. So it's been released now. They cannot reverse it. It's just like spilling water from the glass. You cannot put it back. Like, can't put it back. They say like, oh, it's gone, it's gone. From their perspective. 
So that's why they uh, cannot transfer it. Secondly, why people ask for it? Because it's just like someone has 491. Obviously, subclass 190 is better than 491. They are asking for a better alternate now because they think, oh, I'm satisfied. I've got the 491. And now I want to really want to expedite my process and go for 190. Not going to happen in New South Wales. But other states can do that. Let's say someone has received invitation for 491 in New South Wales and they have applied for the visa as well. As per the policy of New South Wales, uh, they will not invite for 190. But what if someone has got the invitation for 189 or any other state for 190? He or she can apply before the grant of that 491. But once this 491 is granted, the visa holder cannot apply any other visa for three years of a time. There are exceptions there, but that's a general requirement or rule. Okay, so if you submit two EOIs, one for 491 and one for 190, and you get invited to either of them first, you have to stick to, you have to, stick to that. Yeah, you lost opportunity for a second now because yeah. been invited for one. Yeah, but this is obviously assuming the government did their due diligence and like assess you for both. Of and then course. be like, this yeah, is it's what's up to the government now. Right, yeah. I understand then. The next question, this is about specifically 491, pathway one inquiry. Um, so the question is, do I need to be residing in New South Wales to be eligible for pathway one of the skilled work regional visa? No. As we've been talking about that New South Wales is all about residency requirement. Now here is the exception in pathway one subclass 491. It evolves around the employment. 491 pathway 2 or subclass 190 New South Wales, it's evolved around uh, residency. The pathway 1 says if you've been working for employer which is established employer in NSW regional area, you've been working in nominated or closely related occupation, You've been getting paid TISMAT, which is $73,150 gross as per the full-time job, which is 38 hours per week. And if you've been working for uh, 20 hours per week, make it pro rata. And you've been working for one employer only, you are eligible for pathway one. And it does not say you should be living in New South Wales Regional. It does not say you should be living in New South Wales either. So you can apply even interstate, but you must be working for established regional employer, nominated field, been uh, getting paid as per the requirement, working for one employer, six months time, you can apply. So there is no residency requirement in New South Wales for subclass 491 pathway one. one. Secondly, there is no, I mean, you don't have to follow the published list for occupation of four, subclass 491 in New South Wales. It's it's open list. Your occupation must be either in ROL list or SGSL list or MTLSSL list. It means applicant is not bound to follow the list of published by the New South Wales. It can follow the federal or federal list as well. Oh, okay. So if you're applying to interstate, one, actually the resident, we like in the first episode, we talked a lot about residency requirements, okay. right? Like three months, six months, if you're offshore, offshore, onshore, but it actually doesn't apply to the pathway one at all. Yes. Yes. So it's just that the six month is just for the employment. Yeah. Two, two, two things doesn't apply on uh, subclass for pathway one. One, uh, residency in New South Wales. Second, the published list doesn't need to follow that. So that's uh, that's very subjective, but it narrowed down to the employment. Must be working for the employer, established one, been who is established in regional New South Wales. So that's, that's it actually evolves around that. So yeah, that's that's given priority. That's, that's, you can say, center of this visa requirement. Obviously, the other requirements are attached to that, as I mentioned before. And, and, and when you say established, what does it mean for the business? It means 
must have the established office premises should not be working from home. It's, it's, it should not be a uh, home of the employer, should not be virtual office, must be commercial building, established office, just like as a office, office uh, setup or environment and uh, premises as well. So let's say if someone is thinking, oh, maybe my employer, he has company register under his or her name and uh, an office address is the uh, home of that person, not going to happen. Or maybe someone is uh, having that company register in New South Wales Regional, but have the virtual office, not going to happen. They say it should be established premises, commercial one, that's how they will look into that. It has to be very physical. Can't even be like an online business or anything. Oh, no, no. Because uh, how would you establish that you've been working for this New South Wales regional employer establishment? The, the philosophy behind that is having the momentum uh, of economic activity in New South Wales regional and, and, and helping New South Wales regional businesses to recruit or to have more employee or skilled one. That's the whole idea behind that. So let's say if someone is is living or in, in Victoria, let's say, and you just simply make your website, put your addresses of New South Wales, use virtual office, how it will help establish businesses in New South Wales regional. That's the whole philosophy behind that. So that's why they have removed this condition of residency for subclass 4 in one pathway one, and they have removed the condition for uh, following the list published by New South Wales for subclass 4 in one Right, it's to drive more skilled workers into regional That's skills. correct, to attract more. Uh, it's just like a magnet. So if someone is working, it means someone is already genuine skilled worker he or she has already secured job in region New South Wales, and they are, uh, it's a pavement towards the subclass 491 now. Okay, I li and I like that you explained the philosophy and the narrative behind why the government do what they do. Yeah, that's that's what my understanding is. I mean, government haven't told me about it, <laughs> but that's, I mean, if you, if, you, if you read between the lines, so that's what I can think of. Yeah, no, but I, like, I like seeing that side because um, I think... I think it's like, you, you can see the bigger picture, you can see the bigger landscape, yeah.